Maker, this week I noticed a new product photos feature inside of Canva. Stick around to see how this new feature works and who it may be for. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your business. While the product photos feature currently appears to be in beta, I cannot find any information about when this feature was released or who has access to it. No one seems to be talking about this new Canva feature. However, Canva states, product photos allow you to magically bulk edit your product photos. You simply upload your photos and we perfect them for you. Wait, what? I just upload a bunch of product photos and Canva magically edits all of them for me? Let's test out this new feature and see if it will actually be a game changer for non-photographer makers. This is the homepage of Canva. So we're going to go to the left panel here and we're going to select apps. And this week when I jumped in here, I noticed this new product photos option on the left hand side. Now, keep in mind, I don't have a lot of information on this. We do know that it is in beta and Canva basically tells us that it magically bulk edits your photos to get your products ready for sale. You simply upload the photos or folders and they will perfect them for you. I went into the Canva group and searched this new feature. I searched on Google. I cannot find any information on this new feature. So we're just going to jump in here and we're going to test this new feature and see what it offers us. Keep in mind, I have poked around a little bit, but I will be learning as we go as well. Also keep in mind that this feature was not in Canva last week for me when I was in here playing around. I noticed it this week. I did check on the mobile app and I'm not seeing this feature available to me on the mobile app. I'm just have it available to me on the browser desktop version. So let me know in the comments if you have access to this new feature, if you are seeing this inside of your account. I am a Canva Pro member, but you will notice that it doesn't have the little crown next to it. So this feature should be available to free users as well. So let's jump right in and check out this new feature. We're going to click choose photos and we have the option to upload new images or select from our current Canva upload. So those would be uploads that you've already uploaded into the Canva program. It does tell us that you can add up to 10 images at a time to bulk edit. So we're going to click upload new images. Now, this was a shoot that I did for a student inside of the Maker's Method. She joined me for the VIP experience. And so we took photos of her products on white. So we get those studio shots on a pure white background. So I am going to click these and see what Canva does for us. Let's click the next button. And these are the options that we have. So currently, we have e-commerce options in automotive options, which is an odd, odd choice in my opinion. The car in itself is essentially where the product will be placed. Okay. So if we go back to e-commerce here, the box is where the product will be placed. So consider the box being your product will substitute where the box currently is. This first one is just a white background. Second is a white background with shadow. Here we have a white table. We've got platinum, powder blue. You see all the different options. Keep in mind that there are limited options at this point in time. Be mindful of using colors and what colors actually fit your brand. Okay, keep that in mind when we're looking at these options. Let's start with the white background and shadow. Anytime we do background removal or we selectively edit and replace the background, we want to make sure that we have some type of shadow because that, that shadow allows for the product and the image to look realistic. When we do just a, a background removal and the product looks like it's floating, this kind of looks fake and it just isn't high quality. So let's select the white background and shadow and apply that. And let's see what happens here. 
three hours later. Okay, so realistically that did take about a minute and a half for it to process everything, but let's click in here and see what it gives us. So automatically the first thing I notice is that it cropped, let's see if we can click into the actual photo. We can. So the first thing I notice is it looked like it cropped all of the images to a square. It properly framed them. It looks like there were some edits made to potentially to the exposure to the color. And we're going to compare here in a minute. There are a few that did not come out well. So I'm noticing specifically here on the candy cane Santa, we're missing a part of his body. So my guess at this point is that it's using the background removal feature, which we all know that that can have some limitations. We're also missing part of the mouse here. When it comes to the background removal option, if you've seen any of my previous videos on background removal, anytime you're doing selective editing or you're using an automatic background removal like Canva has, you have to make sure that you have a lot of contrast, meaning kind of opposing color, texture, that kind of stuff when you utilize that concept. So the reason that these two did not turn out that great is because the original photo is on white and the product is close to that color as well. So there's some limitations there. So we're seeing those limitations. I feel like the, the drop shadow was nicely done. So that's a bonus, but the drop shadow is a little dark. One thing to keep in mind is we don't have access to the edits that were made. So this is a concept of uploading and allowing Canva to just kind of take over creative control. The downside to this when it comes to product photos specifically is we want to make sure that we are accurately representing the product in the photos. So we definitely want to make sure that the colors are correct and all of that not being able to make adjustments from here forward, which technically you could open up this image, use it in design and make additional edits. But at this point, we don't see the edits that were created. Let's see if it'll show us anything. If we do just a custom size, let's just do 3000 by 3000. And if I click on the actual image and go to edit. So we're not seeing any of the actual edits that were made, but we technically could go in here and we could decrease, increase the brightness. So we can still make edits on top of it. We just can't remove any edits that Canva already did for us. Okay. So that is limiting our creative control. Biggest concern there is we're not able to necessarily keep control over product accuracy, which is going to be huge when it comes to selling products online. Let's go ahead and download all of them and let's see the metadata on these and how they're actually saving. So when it comes to product photography, when you take product photos, whether with your smartphone or a DSLR camera, there are a lot of pixels, which creates a large file size, and this can be potentially become an issue for uploading your images to an online platform. So we, they did crop to a square. So let's go ahead and open this and let's get the info on this and see how they resized. Okay, so this is another partial downside. So they resized the pixel dimensions to 1440 by 1440. And it looks like they reduced the file size to 565 kilobytes. My recommendation for file size is 500 to 700, but at least under one megabyte. That is Etsy's recommendation. And if we look at the pixel dimensions, that's where we kind of have a little bit of concern. So Etsy recommends 2000 on the shortest side. So if you're cropping to a five, four aspect ratio, then you want to make sure that the shortest side would be the height, so that would be 2000, and the width would be 2500. If you're completely lost right now and you want to learn more about resizing your product photos for Etsy and what the recommendation is there, I will drop a link in the description below this video for my recently released video, How to Size Your Images for Etsy 2023, where I take you through my three step process for resizing. 
So the pixel dimensions are a little on the lower side here. As technology progresses with higher resolution screens and displays, we are going to potentially see some limitations when it comes to this size pixel dimensions. Platforms like Etsy continue to increase the minimum pixel dimensions and that is based on these higher resolution screens that are are coming into play as technology advances so currently as i'm recording this video the pixel dimensions that Canva provided us are a little bit on the low side but not a complete deal breaker real quick let's go ahead and compare the edit that canva did to the edit that i did so here is canva's edit let me drag in my edit so you'll see that we did lose a little bit of the uneven light that was intentionally created for this specific product. And it did fill in a little bit of the reflectiveness. So we've got a little bit of white reflection on this side. And to me, the image overall is just a little saturated. That was the first thing that I noticed is it really seemed to oversaturate the colors of the product. So these colors here are true to real life when it comes to this specific product. These are a little saturated and dark. So you'll notice that the actual clay looks a little warmer and the ears especially, they just look a lot oranger and just more, more saturated. So we've gotta be super careful about this when it comes to the accuracy of the product because we want to be accurately representing the color of the product as best as we can. Okay, so the next test that I want to do is I want to go in and I want to test two different products where I actually did different lighting on them. So on some of these, we did even light across the board and then some we had more directional light because we needed to create more depth with that specific little guy. So let's upload these images. Let's go ahead and let's check Cheesy Mouse and let's check Frosty. The reason I'm checking these is because I wanna see if Canva is taking notice of the direction of light. So you'll notice over here on this image, we have more light presence on the left and on this one, we have more light presence on the right. So if you were to accurately create this drop shadow, because the light is coming from this side here, we would have a shadow on this side. And because the light is present, more present over here on this right, we would have a drop shadow on this side. So let's see how Canva edits these for us. Again, we're gonna do the white background plus shadow. Okay, let's jump in here and see what we have here. Okay, so again, the same thing, Cheesy Mouse, you know, we lost a little bit of his foot. Sadly, you know, when you do background removal, you can go in and you can add portions back or erase portions if it doesn't do well. When Canva bulk edits them for you like this, we don't have that option of going in there and actually fixing fixing those edits. So that's a big downside here because this is this image is not going, we're not gonna be able to bulk edit this photo or this product specifically. But we do have more of a presence of light here. You can see this side of the eye is more shadowed. So the shadows are pretty accurate in that representation. And same thing with Frosty here. We've got the presence of light more here coming from kind of a 45 front angle and that is represented in the shadow. So at least it's detecting the presence of light and properly aligning those shadows. So that's really cool. So this morning I randomly grabbed a few products and I just snapped quick photos of them in a few different spaces inside of my house. Basically, like most of you makers will do, you'll just grab your product and snap a few photos. So I want to take those photos and we are going to do a couple, a couple tests with those as well. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is this coffee mug. And I just did two kind of random photos. Did one in a natural setting. We got window light coming in from the left and this one was taken inside of like a pop-up tent with two artificial lights. So let's just pull these in. What I'm gonna utilize with this one is let's go ahead and let's let's try the, the white background and shadow, but then we're gonna come back in and I wanna see this wooden table with bokeh. Um, I wanna see how both of these are gonna work. Okay, let's jump in here and see. Okay, so 
this is a good example because we had two very different kind of setups. So we've got more of an even light setup here. And this one, we had more presence of light on the left-hand side. So if we click into this one, okay, the, it is representing kind of that, that shadow, the drop shadow is kind of nice. The colors are not super accurate. They're a little, little dark, so it didn't make great exposure adjustments. We are losing a little bit of the rim of the top of the cup, but overall, this isn't horrible. The biggest thing with these background removals is we want to make sure all the product is there and we want to make sure the accuracy of color is, is huge. And then we want to make sure also that that drop shadow is accurately representing the way the light is actually falling. Click on this one. This one's a little dark. It also looks like it didn't correct um, the rotation. It's a little tilty. I was hopeful that it would potentially correct that rotation. Because the light is more even, the drop shadow is different. So this is really cool. I want you to take note of that, how the drop shadow is kind of coming forward. So there wasn't more of a presence of light on the left or right. So it's kind of just having that drop shadow be kind of in the center there. That's interesting. It would be useful if we could actually see what edits Canva was making and then also allow us to potentially make adjustments to those edits. Okay, next test, I want to do the same images. And we're going to test it on that wood, that wood background, the wood table. Let's see how realistic this looks. So this is what I would kind of consider a mock-up when it's coming in and you're actually placing it into a setting. It's kind of a mock-up concept and mock-ups can be amazing and then mock-ups can look completely fake. So let's pop these in here and let's see. There's a little bit of a drop shadow. But in my opinion with this, one, the actual mock-up that it gave us is pretty fake looking to begin with. Let's just be realistic here. I think it would be better if we didn't see the edge of the table. The cup is the scale of the cup versus the other additional elements in the background. It's just very large. So there is a disconnect here with reality versus just fabricating something. And this is what we have to be careful with. As I mentioned before, mock-ups can be great. I encourage my students to actually create their own mock-ups, but scale is going to be a huge thing. And we just want to make sure it looks realistic because when it looks fake and it looks fabricated, this brings up questions in regards to quality and trustworthiness of your brand. So I'm not loving the results of these. And this is, you know, the same concept. Again, the cup's a little tilted, crooked. It didn't make adjustments for that, and it's just filling the frame too much, which is kind of setting off uh, questions about realism, especially when it comes to scale. Next, I want to test a different option. So we're gonna grab this natural toothpaste here, and we're gonna hit next. And I wanna test this pewter blue. These, these options here are kind of more for maybe some beauty skincare products. I'm curious to see how they actually frame the product because as you can tell, it wouldn't be filling the frame as much. So let's check this out and see if it actually does proper placement. Okay, let's click on and see the results. So it did pretty well with product placement. It didn't fill the frame as much. Um, we do have a little bit of a drop shadow, but not a ton. One thing I'm definitely noticed is it's not, it's not making any adjustments as far as rotation, as far as perspective, anything like that. So in an image like this specifically, you're going to want to make sure that the original photo that you take is going to be completely straight on at the exact proper angle that you need it to be. Okay, that's going to be super important with these types of photos here because it's not making adjustments to that. And you can see just even like this one is much better. I took this one much more straight on. The actual product is straight, the camera angle, all that was perfect. This one turned out um, much better. We're getting a little bit of, you know, the light reflection on each side. Even looking at them in this scenario, you can tell a difference. This one is a little crooked in turn to, 
to the right, like leaning to the right. Okay, so that's going to be huge. Let's go ahead and test. I took three different images of this one because I wanted to see how they were going to edit. This one here was is wood on wood, so there's barely any contrast. We've got similar color, similar everything there, so I'm curious to see how the background removal works there. This one's really dark, and a lot of makers talk about how they take really dark photos, so I want to see what Justman's Canva is going to make there. And then this one was taken inside of that pop-up tent with two artificial lights. So let's see the results that we get here. And I want to, I'm going to do this to showcase one, even though it's going to end up being wood on wood, which I do not recommend. Anytime you have additional elements, you want that high contrast, really make the product pop. But I just, for, for you know, testing sake, I just want to see how this ends up working. So let's pick that one. Okay, so this right here is a pretty good example of what I'm, I'm talking about. This could potentially look like three different products. So Canva is definitely not necessarily making adjustments to, to the exposure per se. <clears throat> we do have that nice drop shadow on all of these, but these all three look like different products as far as color goes. Okay, and color accuracy is going to be a really, really big thing. And interesting enough, this one is probably the most accurate in color, and that is because we're using artificial lights that are set to the right color temperature, all the things. So a few other things. This one, I'm actually, it looks like they po possibly did end up not getting all of the product, and that could be because it was on that wooden table, and the background remover had a hard time distinguishing. This one looks very fake and floaty to me. I'm just going to be honest. Um, and again, that has the potential of hurting quality and trustworthiness when it comes to your brand. If you aren't taking the time to create quality product photos that ac accurately represent your product, then the shopper may question where else there are quality issues. I also notice if you look right here in the background, there's some blinds back there. So the background removal remover missed that component and did not take it out. Okay, so I do not like the results of these. Very fabricated looking. Again, perspective, scale, all of that is off. Okay, same here. It did capture the background. We don't have any issues with the background over there. But this is very dark. This was our dark photo. So if you have an issue with taking dark images, this isn't going to be a great solution for you. This is the one that we did inside of the 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 artificial setup so we are getting better color accuracy but again it just it looks like it's floating even though we have this drop shadow um there should be more of a shadow present here to make it not look so floaty it's exceeding the actual perimeter so that that's a problem it just makes it look fake and again we notice that the background remover missed a portion there Trust me when I say that I understand when you're first starting out, you cannot do all the things and do all the things well. So there are going to be areas where you are going to have to, you know, take some shortcuts or you're going to have, or they're going to have to be good enough at this point so that you can get started. I never recommend that anybody leave new products sitting on the shelf because they dread photographing them. My recommendation is if you're first starting out, maybe the white background plus shadow is a good option to get those pure studio shots on white. I'm not loving any of the results we got with these. And there just aren't a lot of options available inside here yet. So while this feature is really cool, it's kind of a done for you option. It's not a great done for you option. It's not a quality done for you option. And it's not a place where you should live. Okay, this would be a good place to get started, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're continuing, constantly continuing to learn about product photos, learning how to take your own quality product photos. Learning how to take your own quality product photos is one of the skills that will pay you time and time again. Think about how many times you need to take a product photo for a new product that you're listing or for social media. You're constantly having to take photos for your business and quality matters. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own product photos. See you next time.